Good morning. I'm Cindy Hamilton, and I'm the author of Praying Through Psalms, a guide to contemplative prayer using Anglican prayer beads. This is the third in a series of six short videos on praying through the Psalms and making your own prayer beads. This morning, I'm going to show you how to make them, things you'll need to get you started. And then the next three, we can start praying together. So when I um, begin, I, after I have chosen my cross and my um, invitatory resurrection and four cruciform beads and my sets, there are four sets of seven beads. Once I have those all chosen and my spacer beads, then I need wire. And I like to use 0 0.30 millimeter wire. And you need two crimp beads. I use two millimeter crimp beads. Crimp beads are kind of crucial. So when you hear me say crimp bead, pay attention. Um, because beads are all a different size, it's hard to say you need X amount of wire. So what I do is I lay my bead set out as it's going to look when I'm finished. I take my wire, try to go up and around and then back, so I'm imagining I've got wire for my whole set of beads. And then I go one more time, because I don't have my spacer beads in yet, and you will cut off some at the end, but better to have extra than to be short and then have to start over. Okay, that's step number one. Next step is your first crimp bead. You put your first crimp bead on the wire, and then you put the wire through your cross at the top. Then you've got a long piece of wire, a short piece of wire, a tail if you want to call it that. That has to go back through the crimp bead so that you've made your own little loop. And the little, the little holes are the fiddly places. Okay. I still do not have that on there. Sorry, friends. So that'll give you time to get your wire through your cross your crimp bead on. And then you wanna have enough of a tail to come back up through these first three larger beads. And then you wanna get this crimp bead down as snug as you can, and you're going to crimp it. You crimp the first crimp bead, but you don't crimp the second one when we put it in. So we'll put the second one on in just a bit. Then I use a couple of Spacer beads, I like to just leave mine on the table. It's easier for me to put the wire into the hole. But those also need to go both pieces of your wire. Eventually you won't have two to keep working with, but at the beginning it's fiddly. And because you don't cut that tail off, you keep it, it's part of your securing anchor the beginning of your beads. Now you're going to put on the invitatory bead. You want that little short tail to go through there also. And then two more seed beads. You might want to use three. Lots of times I use three. It kind of depends. I sometimes look at it and decide. Um, the color of seed beads you use can really change the look of your prayer beads. So um, take some time with that. If you start to use a seed bead and you're, it's not making you happy, uh, go ahead and try the other color you thought might also work. Now we're going to put on the resurrection bead. I found uh, this stone at a little rock shop and I've been waiting to use it. it um, it's just pretty in it makes me happy to look at it because it's got two different colors and makes me mindful of how creative our Lord is. 
Then two more. Two more seed beads. And then our first cruciform bead. So we're just about past the really fiddly part at the beginning and then it gets fiddly again at the end. So here's our first cruciform bead. Cruciform beads, I was pretty excited about. I found them at a garage sale. So when we can garage sale again, know that people lots of times decide it's time to get rid of their craft stuff. And now the second of the two crimp beads. So the first one was at the top of the cross. We pinched it off or crimped it off. This one we will not because we're now going to go up all the way through all of these and come back and go through the crimp bead again. And once we get it secured, all this wire back through, um, then we will crimp it off. Don't crimp it off now. People, I've worked with a lot of people and that often gets crimped off and then you don't have an anchor. So you have to take your whole set of beads apart. Now, we begin our first set of seven beads. So it's, um, Again, I did two uh, seed beads right after the first cruciform and then my first weak bead. I'm only going to put one of these in between each of my uh, weak beads or sets of beads. So it's bead spacer, bead spacer. And it's going to go all all the way up and around. I'm not going to finish this off, but just, just know you're gonna go bead spacer, bead spacer. And then when you get to your cruciform beads, you're gonna do two. Two on either side of your cruciform bead, and then back one to one through seven, and then two more. I always stop and count my beads before I get to the next cruciform bead to make sure I actually have seven and not six. Now I wanna show you one thing. I showed you a cross that the wire goes through the top. Sometimes you'll have a cross that the hole goes through the whole thing. And what I do with that is I go ahead and put the wire in. I take the little spacer bead so that it's anchored at the bottom. I put this back in through the hole of the cross, pull it up, and then repeat with the cruciform bead. You can always ask me a question in the comment boxes or message me on Facebook with questions that you have. Then I wanted to show you, now you've gotten all of your your beads and spacers, beads and spacers, and you've come to the end. And now it's time to put this wire back through the, the crimp bead that you did not crimp. And what I usually do is just do a little measurement like this and cut off this extra. So there's a little bit of extra, to, but it's too hard to fit that much wire through. So you're gonna go back through this crimp bead, through this hole. Sometimes it'll just go through all the beads. I like to just have a little more. Sometimes if you try to put it through too many beads at once, it'll get stuck and it gets messy. Now, if you have beads with really small holes and your wire's too wide, that becomes difficult. Also, the other thing is if any of your beads have really large holes, um, lots of times your, your spacer beads or your crimp bead will get lost. So I get this through to the end. Where are you? Ah, there it is. Then I pull it just as tight and secure as I can one thing, remember to keep um, counting. Make sure your pattern is right, that you haven't ended up with 
six or eight week beads or that you haven't skipped a cruciform bead, um, it, it's not the worst thing in the world to start over. I've made every mistake possible and have redone more sets of prayer beads than I like to count. Um, but if you keep looking at a pattern, if you have a picture in a book, I'll take a picture of this and post it in the comment section on Facebook so you'll have that to look at. If you have the book, there's a pattern inside the book. Now, you're gonna get a hold of that little crimp bead. You're gonna squeeze it. You're gonna cut this off as close as you can. Then you have another set of beads. You can see I really like turquoise. If you have questions, feel free to contact me. I would be happy to answer your questions. Now we can get ready to pray some of the Psalms together. I'm Cindy Hamilton. Peace of the Lord be with you.